All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, today, we're going to be talking about your root ray many storage in Kubernetes uh, with Manila CSI. My name is Victoria Martinez de la Cruz. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. And I'm Christian Schwede, also a software engineer at Red Hat, uh, working together with Victoria and the storage team, OpenStack storage team. All right. Uh, first, we are going to quickly cover the agenda that we prepared for you today. Uh, first, we are going to start with an introduction of Kubernetes, storage, and CSI. Uh, then we are going to move to CS uh, Cinder CSI and Manila CSI, which are the storage options that we have in the cloud provider OpenStack. Then we are going to do a brief introduction about OpenStack Manila. We are going to move to uh, talk about how to deploy Manila CSI. Then we are going to show you uh, a really base use case on how to use um, Manila CSI. We have a link with a demo that you can check out later if you want as well. And we are going to wrap up with some future work that we have in our agenda. All right. Thanks, Victoria. So let's start uh, talking about st storage and Kubernetes first. So storage in Kubernetes, um, even if you're running like the most fancy stateless application today, you still need some place to, well, you need, still need some persistent storage, right? Um, and uh, for example, your database wants to store some data um, and you run it on the containerized orchestrator, so you need some storage at the back end somewhere. So Kubernetes introduced this back in 1.14, in the release 1.14, with the idea of physical volumes and this, well, when this became generally available. All of the drivers, the storage drivers, were in tree drivers back then. So that actually means that any storage appliance that you want to use, the driver existed in the upstream core Kubernetes distribution. Now, that actually required vendors to participate in the upstream development model, right? And to contribute to the upstream uh, source code. Um, it also required that they align with the release cadence. And for the upstream community, it actually means that they had to review and sometimes even maintain storage code. So the requirement to actually have a more flexible way came up and uh, to add storage drivers for container orchestrators or Kubernetes. And this is how actually the idea of the container storage interface uh, was born. And as it already implies from the name, it's not only for Kubernetes, it's for container orchestrators in general. So um, it was developed as a standard for exposing different block and file storage systems to containerized or container orchestrators. It also enabled the storage vendors um, to develop a plugin only once, even if you wanted to use it, for example, on Kubernetes and some other uh, container orchestrator, let's say Rancher, Docker, whatnot. <clears throat> um, some part of the code is actually shared, um, but um, let's see, one second, sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, if you really want to go into detail, we have a couple of links available in the slides later for you. Um, so about the containerized uh, storage interface spec. Um, because some uh, drivers existed before, uh, there need to be a migration path, actually, from using the entry drivers to the CSI implementations. And um, there were some, or there are some migration tools available, uh, and this should be done by probably by now. One thing I didn't mention yet is uh, there is some commonly shared boilerplate code, and this one is maintained by the upstream community, for example, the Kubernetes community or the CSI community, to be more specifically. Um, so when you have a storage driver, you need some, well, kind of like plugins, actually, um, that maintain and um, interact with the APIs that are commonly used, uh, for example, to attach and detach a volume. And these are sidecar containers and maintained by the upstream community then. All right. How do you use Kubernetes and the CSI drivers running on top of OpenStack? There is uh, some integration available, a set of plugins to integrate Kubernetes and OpenStack, and it's um, part of the cloud provider OpenStack. Um, actually, it's pretty nice to run Kubernetes on top of uh, OpenStack. For example, what you can do is to give every department that wants to run their own deployment of Kubernetes um, their own instance with full access rights or full administrator rights. 
um, but at the same time isolating these from the underlying infrastructure, right? And these deployments are then completely isolated from each other. So one, one department could run like completely set of different um, deployment or workloads um, to the next department. But it's not only about isolating the workloads or the compute workloads, but also about isolating like storage workloads. And part of that is um, maintained or provided by the Cinder CSI and Manila CSI drivers that are part of the cloud provider OpenStack. And they actually share some set of features. Uh, for example, both of them provide specific access modes. I will get to that in a minute. Um, in this case, it's read-write once and read-write many modes. Um, both of them provide access to multiple backends and hard multi-tenancy using Keystone. The major difference from a user point of view is actually the kind of storage that you expose, with Cinder CSI um, providing access to block storage and Manila CSI to shared file storage. Okay, um, let's get to access modes quickly. Um, there are basically four different modes um, that are most, most interesting. So read-write once is basically you have one node that has access, read-write access uh, to your volume. Um, and I'm highlighting the concept of the node here. So any pod running on the same node could at least theoretically have access to the same set of, or the same volume. There's read-only many uh, access mode, which is pretty nice, for example, if you want to, re let's say, restore a backup uh, on multiple nodes or many nodes. And probably most interesting, and this is what the talk about, is about, is read-write many mode where a volume can be actually mounted on multiple nodes and all of these nodes have write access, um, for example, to a shared file system. And pretty new in Kubernetes 1.22 is the read-write-once pod mode, um, where a volume is actually mounted or available only to a single pod, which is pretty nice for sensitive data handling as well as ensuring that only a single pod is writing to your file system. All right, so Victoria is our Manila expert, so I'm handing it back over to her. All right, so uh, now we are going to quickly cover about OpenStack Manila, if you're not familiar with it, and compare that with uh, Manila CSI. So uh, let's take a quick moment uh, to introduce Manila. Uh, Manila is the shared file system as a service for OpenStack. Um, it has support for more than 30 uh, backends, being those proprietary and open source. Some ex examples that we can mention are NetApp, CephFS, Dell EMC, Gluster, among others. And it also has support for multiple protocols, uh, being those NFS, SIFS, ClusterFS, HDFS, CephFS, and more. Um, regarding features, uh, OpenStack Manila offers um, a really extensive API that you can use uh, to manage your storage backends and, well, to your shares. Uh, in Manila CSI, we have a, a smaller set of those operations that you can do, um, but well, those are under development um, in, in our case. Uh, but right now, what you can do, well, is the basic operation for share creation, expanding existing shares, creating snapshots, restoring from snapshots, and mounting, obviously, uh, your Manila shares. Uh, now let's uh, take a look to uh, the original design that we have uh, when we started working on OpenStack Manila. Um, basically, in this scenario, we were the, uh, envisioning an OpenStack cloud in which you would run uh, OpenStack uh, Manila service, and you would create shares uh, with any storage backend that you might have in your deployment, and you would provide those shares to the instances running in your uh, compute as a service, like in the case of OpenStack, that is Nova, uh, and you would be able to share uh, that storage among those different instances. That is the most uh, basic uh, scenario and, well, the initial use case. And now we can extend it to the uh, diagram that follows. Uh, now we can imagine uh, an environment in which you have uh, OpenStack Manila running as uh, we show initially. And uh, we can leverage the OpenStack Manila service providing shares not only to the instance you already have uh, running in your cloud, but also extending that to containers uh, and your bare metal nodes. Uh, with the Manila CSI driver implementation, basically you can leverage this uh, deployment that you already have uh, to provide uh, storage for your container workloads. 
Uh, no, uh, let's make a quick stop and let's um, analyze how uh, Manila CSI um, plugin works. Any CSI driver is composed by two components mainly. Uh, you have the controller plugin and the node plugin. The CSI Manila controller plugin is the one dealing with all the Manila operations, basically communicating with the control plane. So all the operations that has to do with, okay, creating a share, allowing access, denying access, basically is the um, Manila CSI controller plugin the one in charge of doing that. Now we have all the node-related operations, basically all the communication that go to the data plane. Um, which are carried out by another CSI driver dedicated for that particular file system. So in our case, Manila CSI node plugin acts as a proxy driver that communicates to uh, CSI NFS, for instance, or CSI Ceph in order to uh, perform the actual creating share operation or mounting share operation. This has been done this way in order to min minimize the cost of developing a maintainer of drivers. It didn't make sense at the point to actually rewrite um, the whole thing if we could use what was already available in, in the community. Um, obviously, because of this, uh, right now we have support for these protocols, but well, we expect to see in the future uh, support for more pro protocols added. Uh, having this in mind, let's take a look now at this uh, sample deployment. In this deployment, we are imagining uh, an OpenStack cloud in which you have your Manila service running. And uh, in this cloud, you have two different Kubernetes clusters running. Um, and you have two different storage backends providing Ceph shares and NFS shares or well, other storage shares. Um, in this case, I want to make a quick stop because I want to uh, call out a limitation that the Manila CSI driver has. Actually, it's not uh, a Manila CSI driver limitation, but it's actually a CSI limitation in which basically, while well, initially we wanted to provide the opportunity for you to uh, use multiple protocols using Manila CSI, uh, you can only uh, provide storage for one specific protocol, protocol for one instance of your Manila CSI uh, driver running. So if you want to have multiple protocols, such as in this case, you will need to have um, Manila CSI for NFS running uh, in one of the clusters and Manila CSI running uh, with NFS in the other cluster. Um, obviously, you can have one cluster running different instances of the Manila CSI driver, so this is not a big problem. It's easily, uh, you have a re really easy workaround, but well, we expect to see some enhancement in the future for this case. All right, now let's talk about how to deploy Manila CSI. All right, thanks, Victoria. So when we want to deploy Manila CSI, let's first have a look at what we actually need to run it. So obviously the Manila CSI driver itself, right? And the Manila CSI driver itself requires, for, a couple, uh, for example, a couple of sidecar containers to, let's say, attach and detach volumes. We need a couple of roles and role bindings in Kubernetes, custom resource definitions, a stateful set, and a daemon set. You could actually deploy these manually if you wanted to, and there are some YAML files in the upstream repositories, but actually there's a better way to do. Um, I get to that in a second. In addition to the Manila CSI driver, you also need the NFS CSI driver, at least if you want to run it on top of NFS. And last but not least, you need to create storage classes in Kubernetes to actually um, access the Manila share types, the, yeah, the Manila shares. So how do you deploy Manila CSI on Kubernetes itself? As mentioned, you could actually uh, deploy all the YAML files, but there's a better way using Helm charts. So we're going to use the Helm charts. First, we're going to add the repository for the cloud provider OpenStack, um, because that's where uh, Manila CSI does exist in and then going to do a repo update and install the Manila CSI driver. Basically, the same is then be done or needs to be done by the, or for the NFS CSI driver. So again, we have some Helm charts. I shortened the URL a little bit, but uh, the full link will be available in the slides. But as you can guess, it's on GitHub, so yeah, you will easily find it as well. And then install the CSI driver uh, themselves. And the next step is to create actually a storage class or multiple storage classes. Um, I'll skip that for a second now. Uh, Victoria will mention that very shortly. But there are multiple ways to do this or multiple ways to create storage classes. 
and you find a couple of examples in the upstream uh, source code repository. Now, if you run the downstream version of Kubernetes, Red Hat's downstream uh, version of Kubernetes on OpenShift, um, there's also a Manila CSI driver operator available. And this operator basically checks if, the, if Manila is actually running on the underlying OpenStack deployment. And if so, it installs the Manila CFS driver, uh, CSI driver, the uh, NFS CSI driver, and creates a storage class for each share type. And the interesting bit here is that it also resyncs. So when you create a new share in Manila, it will become as a new storage class within, uh, I think, 60 seconds. Um, so a small note here that um, it doesn't delete actually storage classes. So if you delete a Manila share in the underlying OpenStack deployment, it will still be visible um, in the Kubernetes deployment or OpenShift deployment. The operator itself is installed by default in OpenShift 4.6 and newer. Before that, you had to go or to install it manually, for example, using the OpenShift marketplace. All right. Now, assuming that you have like a, man a running Manila CSI implementation now, the next step is to use it. And for that, I hand it over back to Victoria. All right. So actually, using Manila CSI is pretty easy once you have your deployment done. Uh, we are going to start by defining a storage class, as Christian mentioned. Uh, if you are using the Manila CSI operator, that's something that is going to be automatically for you. Um, the Manila CSI operator basically is going to query uh, Manila to get the share type or share types that it has, and it's going to create a storage classes for you. Otherwise, a really basic storage class definition is going to look as the YAML file you have on the um, slide. Uh, the most important part that you have to, to declare, obviously, is the provisioner and, well, uh, the name for it that has to match the shared, uh, the shared type that you have created in the OpenStack Manila side. When you have this, you need to create your PVC. Um, this is actually very simple as well, since, um, well, this is the PVC that we use in our demo. It's uh, very simple. It has a couple of lines. Uh, the most important part that you have to define here is basically the access mode that you want to use depending on your use case and the storage class name uh, referring to the storage class that we created before. And with that, I think we can move to the demo, which I'm going to share quickly here. Let me see if it's uh, visible. Okay. All right. Is it visible by the size of the, uh, yeah? Okay. So let's hit play. All right, so we're going to start by creating the storage class that we mentioned. Um, it's exactly the same storage class that we show in the slide, so um, in our case, we have it already created, but we are showing the YAML, so you can take a look. Uh, we are going to take a look into the Manila side uh, and check that the type is created. That is the type in the uh, OpenStack side. Now we are going to create the PVC. First, we are going to show the content of it. I think, oh no, we're not. <laughs> um, we create the PVC. We make sure that it has bound it to a PV. It's bound. Now we are going to check on the OpenStack side if uh, the share has been created. We can see with Manila list that the share is created there. And now what we are going to do basically is create uh, the, well, container workloads. We are going to create three writers. Uh, it's a really basic writer definition. Um, we have two running on the same node, and the third one that is running in a different node. And we are going to start looking into, well, various things now that we are running. First, we are going to check that the uh, PB that we created has been mounted in the same uh, mount location, uh, which is uh, slash mount. Now we are going to check that um, all of them are writing in the same share. And lastly, like at any minute, we can check that from one writer, we can see that the other writer is writing in, the, in a specific file in real time. We can do that in any of the writers that, that are running right now and will um, basically mimic exactly what we are doing in each of them. And with that, well, basically, that's 
the short demo that we have for you is accessible, and all the YAML files that we are showing are accessible as well, if you want to check that out. And we are going to close up with future work. Let me see if I, okay, perfect. So for future work, we have a couple of things. Um, in our team, we're working on some performance testing. Basically, we want to check how everything, like all the level of abstraction that we have are working. Uh, we have Ceph on one side, we have OpenStack, and we have Kubernetes or OpenShift running on top. So it's a lot of things happening at the same time. Uh, we are doing some I.O. tests uh, with VIO. We're also running some API scale tests with OpenStack Browbit. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Also some lat latency tests. Um, we don't have results yet to show it to you, but well, we expect that in our future, in a future presentation, maybe we can have some information to share, to share with you. And secondly, I want to mention some uh, experiment that um, some colleagues have been doing on backups. Uh, actually, there was a talk uh, at KubeCon in Valencia by Robert Bashek. Robert Bashek is uh, one of the main or original authors of the Manila CSI driver. Uh, he sh shared some data that uh, he has been getting by using uh, Belero and RESTIC and also Canister I.O. when performing backups. And well, um, I don't know if that talk is already published, um, but um, if so, I, I know that there are slides, but I know if the recording is available. But if so, uh, take a look because uh, the information that uh, he, he got was pretty nice. Um, all right. So with that, we are open for questions. Merci. Could you try? Yeah, to there is a microphone over there. Yeah, thanks. Um, my question is: um, You mentioned there were a number of um, front-end protocols that Manila supports. Uh, why would I choose one protocol over another one? Well, I guess depending on the use case you have on your business needs. Okay, so um, it, within, within Kubernetes specifically for, for exposing, are, are there any performance uh, benefits of say CephFS over NFS? Or? Not really, no. Not that we are, that we are, we are aware at least. So, so for, for Kubernetes specifically, it probably doesn't matter too much which one you pick. Um, yeah. the, and the front end might be for other workloads. Right, exactly. Most people should use NFS because that's what's familiar for them, but uh, it really doesn't matter. Thank you. No props. All right, I don't know if there are more questions. If not, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. <clears throat>